Did you know your air conditioner is basically using the same technology that hasn't changed since the 1920s? That's right, while your phone, car, and even your doorbell have gotten smarter, your AC is still running on century old technology, but there's something revolutionary happening right now that could change everything about how we cool our homes. Imagine an air conditioner with no refrigerants, no compressor, and that's twice as efficient. In this video, I'm going to show you how solid state cooling technology might be the biggest HVAC breakthrough of our lifetime. You might think your current AC is working just fine, but what if I told you it's been running on tech that hasn't fundamentally changed since the roaring 20s? That's right, while your smartphone gets updated every single year, the cooling system keeping you comfortable uses essentially the same vapor compression cycle invented when your grandparents were children. Because inside your condenser outside your home, your air conditioner's compressor pressurizes refrigerant that continuously transforms between liquid and gas states. And when it expands to a gas, it absorbs heat from your inside your evaporator coil, and when it's compressed, back down to liquid outdoors, it releases that heat or rejects it, which is a repeating cycle that gradually cools down your home. Now, the refrigerants powering this process have a troubling environmental history that most homeowners don't always hear about. And in addition, the industry has cycled through multiple refrigerant types as each revealed serious problems. CFCs devastated the ozone layers, HCFCs were somewhat better but still harmful, and today's HFCs spare the ozone but function as potent greenhouse gases and are extremely costly every time they are phased out and the environmental impact and this creates a frustrating cycle for homeowners because when scientists discover problems with the current refrigerants regulators phase them out forcing you to get a new system and manufacturers redesign systems for replacement chemicals with different properties and then you pay when your functional but outdated system suddenly needs replacement because repair parts vanish or refrigerant becomes prohibitively expensive. And these replacements hit hard financially because a new home air conditioning system can cost tens of thousands or more, which is a scenario you might face multiple times if you own your home long enough. Now, your electric bill suffers too because air conditioning dominates summer energy usage and easily accounts for 30 to 50% of summer electric costs. And during heat waves, that percentage climbs even higher, straining both your finances and the power grid. And with the adoption of more heat pumps in the winter, the same is now true in the winter months. And the technology itself has efficiency limitations because even the best refrigeration cycle systems struggle to break certain efficiency barriers due to fundamental physics of the compression cycle. Because despite incremental improvements over decades, we're still approaching the theoretical limits of this century old technology. And the combination of harmful refrigerants, forced equipment, obsolescence, and energy inefficiency explain why scientists have been searching for a completely different approach. The holy grail would be technology that eliminates refrigerants entirely while delivering equal or better cooling with less energy consumption. And while the HVAC industry has been tweaking the same old technology for decades, a radically different approach has been developing in research labs. And that's exactly what happens with elastocaloric cooling. And it might be the new technology that finally frees your home from the refrigeration cycle completely. Because this cooling revolution centers around nitinol, which is a special alloy made of nickel and titanium that scientists call a shape memory alloy or SMA for short. Unlike regular metals that bend and stay bent, nitinol remembers its original shape and returns to it when it's heated, similar to how a memory foam mattress recovers after pressure is removed. The magic happens in nitinol's internal structure. Nitinol exists in two different solid forms called phases, austenite and martensite. And when you stretch nitinol wire, you force it to transform from one phase to another. And this transformation releases energy as heat. Starting with nitinol at room temperature of about 22 degrees Celsius and stressing it causes the temperature to jump up to 49 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to burn your fingers. And the remarkable part occurs when you release that stress, the nitinol undergoes a reverse transformation and absorbs heat, cooling down dramatically to about five degrees Celsius, which is 17 degrees cooler than its starting temperature and about the same temperature as an evaporator coil inside your air conditioner. Now, this temperature drop enables elastocaloric cooling without any chemical refrigerants. And scientists call this behavior thermal hysteris, which means the material changes under stress. The temperature at which nitinol heats up when stressed differs from the temperature at which it cools when the stress is removed, creating an efficient cooling cycle. The process works in four steps, mirroring traditional AC systems, but using solid metal instead of gas. Apply force to heat the nitinol, remove that heat, 
release the stress to cool the night and all below its starting temperature and use that cooling effect to absorb heat from your room and repeat the cycle all over again. And according to Dr. Ichiro Takuchi from the University of Maryland, who is a leading researcher in this field, elastocaloric materials have a potential coefficient of performance of around 20, while the best AC systems typically reach only three to five. And though he acknowledges that the real world implementation will reduce this efficiency as each component in the system will eat into that COP performance, the technology still remains promising. And the practical benefits are significant because systems without refrigerants eliminate the risk of leaking harmful chemicals and avoid regulatory issues when refrigerants are phased out due to environmental concerns. And the mechanical design could be much simpler than traditional AC units with standard compressors and thermostatic expansion valves, potentially resulting in fewer repair issues and longer lifespans. And despite the mechanical simplicity advantage we just covered, elastocaloric cooling sits firmly in that frustrating zone between revolutionary breakthrough and available at your local Home Depot. And academic journals are buzzing about this technology because publications have skyrocketed over 100% between 2017 and 2022 alone, and this growth curve signals significant activity in research labs worldwide. But expectations need a serious reality check because the largest prototype developed so far generates about 200 watts of cooling, which is enough for, let's say, a wine cooler, but nowhere near sufficient for your home. You see, a typical house requires around 3,500 watts of cooling capacity, which is 17 times what current prototypes can deliver. And in spite of that, scientists are working diligently on solutions. Currently, over 20 elastocaloric prototypes are in various stages of development worldwide. In 2022, researchers created a fully integrated elastocaloric refrigerator with a cooling power of just 3.1 watts. The University of Maryland team holds the current record with their 200 watt prototype developed in 2023, while Saarland University researchers have built a refrigerator capable of cooling a single small bottle. And although progress is happening, but we're far from home ready systems. And engineers face serious technical challenges as well because those night and all wires suffer from stress fatigue after thousands of stretching cycles, which is similar to a paper clip that breaks after being back and forth repeatedly. So your AC would need these wires to literally withstand thousands of stress cycles hourly for decades. And this is why scaling presents another major hurdle because generating enough cooling for an entire house requires a massive array of wires working in perfect synchronization. You'd need incredibly efficient actuators that don't consume more electricity than you're saving. And the result might be a refrigerator dominated by mechanical parts with minimal space for actual food. And on NASA's technology readiness level scale, elastocaloric cooling remains relatively low. And this makes sense considering that dedicated conferences for this technology only began last year, which means we're dealing with this field in its scientific infancy. So when might these systems reach the market? Well, experts project the first commercial applications and specialized cooling systems within five to 10 years with home ready systems likely following an additional five to 10 years after that. So short answer is don't postpone replacing your failing AC unit now, hoping that elastocaloric technology will arrive next summer. And despite these challenges, there's genuine reason for optimism because the International Institute of Refrigeration has officially recognized elastocaloric materials as outperforming other solid state cooling approaches. Among refrigerant free technologies, this is currently considered the most promising path forward. The material itself, nitinol, has been commercially available since the 1980s for medical applications, giving manufacturers a valuable head start on the material science side. And as we've seen today, solid state cooling represents a revolutionary advancement for homeowners like yourself. While elastocaloric systems aren't available at your local HVAC supplier yet, or probably anytime soon, understanding this technology helps you make smarter decisions about your current system's future. So for those of you that are considering major HVAC investments now, remember that the landscape could dramatically change within the next decade or two, meaning lower energy bills while reducing your environmental footprint and also less forced phase outs due to planned obsolescence. And these efficient prototypes may be small today, but their benefits make them worth watching. We hope you found this content helpful. And if you did, please make sure you hit the like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already and watch this next video.